tender denying the antecedent. So this is modus tollens. Um, it looks like this. If P then Q, not Q, then not P. All right, so um, if you could jot that down or have your book open to refer to this as we look at these other examples. So here's an example of modus tollens. If Larry went to work today, then he would take the truck. There's Larry's truck. Larry didn't take the truck. Therefore, Larry did not go to work today. This is valid. It follows modus tollens. If P then Q, not Q, then not P. If P then Q, not Q, then not P, uh, modus tollens. And um, if one is two and two is true, three follows necessarily, and the argument is sound. Good, valid argument. Okay, how about this one? If it's raining, the park is closed. The park is not closed, therefore it is not raining. This is an example of modus tollens. If P then Q, not Q, not P. Okay, and again, it's valid. Here's another one. So again, a valid argument is one where the premises, if they were true, would guarantee the truth of the conclusion. So um, here's a, a modus hold. If the car is in the lot, then it has California plates. So this is saying that every car in the lot has California plates. If it's in the lot, then it's got to have California plates because every car in the lot has California plates. Natalie's car does not have California plates. Okay, now what can we infer to that? What does one and true two together guarantee? It guarantees that Natalie's car is not in the lot. And you can just see how this follows, that if every car in the lot has California plates and Natalie's car doesn't have California plates, then obviously Natalie's car cannot be in the lot. And there uh, is modus tollens. Um, the truth of one and two um, guarantee the truth of three. Um, I really like how Kevin DePlant uh, does the, um, puts the containers together. So um, what did he say? Um, if, my, if the squirrel's in the suitcase, then the squirrel's in the closet, the squirrel's in the suitcase, therefore the squirrel's in the closet, and he puts the squirrel in the suitcase and the closet, and they're all together. Um, so the truth of these two guarantee the truth of three. Okay, does Natalie's car not having a California plate guarantee that it's not in the lot? Yes, it guarantees that it's not in the lot, um, if you take the truth of one and two. Um, so you got a valid and sound argument. So that's modus tollens. Um, here's the invalid modus tollens pretender. It's called denying the antecedent. And you can see it here um, in the park example if we switch the um, phrasing around. Um, if it's raining, the park is closed. It's not raining, therefore the park is not closed. So we flip things around. If P then Q, we're going to deny, deny the antecedent, not P, therefore not Q. Um, real modus tollen says if P then Q, not Q, then not P. I flip these around. And you can just see intuitively why this is, it, it doesn't follow. If it's raining, then the park is closed. It's not raining, therefore the park is not closed. Well, does the truth of one and two guarantee the truth of three? Uh, no, because the park could be closed um, for other reasons besides the rain. So um, this says that if it's raining, the park will be closed. Um, raining is a sufficient condition for the park being closed. Um, but um, there are other reasons the park could be closed. Um, could be, I don't know, they just sprayed the park with pesticide or uh, they're, I don't know, redoing the sprinkling system. So, um, so remember, in an invalid argument, there could be circumstances where the premises are true and the conclusion is false. And that's the, uh, the um, counterexample method. Okay. Fallacy of denying the antecedent. So here's another example of the fallacy of denying the antecedent. If someone wins the lottery, then he will be wealthy. 
Bill Gates did not win the lottery, therefore Bill Gates is not wealthy. Okay, so this uses very familiar examples, so it's easy to see the, uh, the counterexample here. Uh, this is committing the fallacy of denying the antecedent. If someone wins the lottery, then he will be wealthy. If P, then Q, not P, therefore not Q. Um, that's the bad pattern. And then you can use the counterexample argument to show that um, just because someone does not win the lottery doesn't mean that they're not wealthy. Um, you could make one true and two true, but the conclusion false. So it's true if someone wins uh, the lottery, then they'll be wealthy. True, but it's true that Bill Gates did not win the lottery, but it's not the case. This three is false, and you could easily see that. Uh, so we know this argument is invalid. Here again is the fallacy of denying the antecedent. P the Q, not P, therefore not Q. That's fallacious. Um, modus tollens, the valid form of this says if P then Q, not Q, therefore not P. Okay, invalid. Okay, here's another one. If there is life on a planet, then there is water. This is harder because um, because the example isn't so uh, down to earth. Um, we all know that Bill Gates is wealthy uh, for this one. Uh, this one, we're not as familiar with water on Mars. If there is life on a planet, then there is water, and there is no life on Mars, therefore there is no water on Mars. Wow, so this, uh, this is pretty tricky. And you can know, you know, you can either come up with a counterexample, or you can just look at the form. If there is life on a planet, if P then Q, there's no life on a planet, not P, therefore not Q. Well, no, that's the fallacy of denying the antecedent. Um, the counterexample method, if there's life on a planet, then there's life on, then there's water, that's true, and there's no life on Mars, uh, true. Well, actually, it turns out that it's false. Um, there is water on Mars, or there was water on Mars, I think. I think there might actually, I don't know the science right now. There may, I think there's water on Mars. Um, so it turns out that this is true and this is true, but that's false. So um, there could be water on a planet with no life. Um, you don't just need water to have life. There are other things, uh, other necessary conditions for life on a planet. Okay. Okay, so um, conditional arguments, modus ponens. Okay, so this is a summary of what we've talked about. Uh, here's modus ponens. If P then Q, P then Q. Therefore, Q, that's modus ponens. Modus tollens. If P then Q, um, not Q. Therefore, not P. Modus tollens. Those two are valid. Here are the invalid pretenders. If P then Q, Q, therefore P, that is affirming the consequent. And here's the invalid pretender tender of modus tollens, um, affirming, uh, denying the antecedent, not P, therefore not Q. And these four forms are in the last, on the back cover of your uh, textbook. The famous forms, modus ponens, modus tollens.